Um, first of all, thank you both uh, for coming. This uh, for 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 being a part of this. Um, this is a, 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 a totally unique uh, for me, and yet I'm really um, learning a lot from 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 you and from other people in the community. And it's just been a pleasure um, to to work to work with you. So again, thank you for um, for being a part of this. Um, I guess the, the the two questions that we have are kind of related. And and the, but the first one is. Um, about community, and it's—I would say—it's not only what does what does community mean to you, but but if if in a, if there are a, a word or two words or a sentence, you know, what is what does community mean to you in that broad in that broad sense? So I would say that community is not really a place, place but a belief that we are all in this together. As well as we, we deal, we'd like to think that there's one community, but we really have to be mindful that there are multiple communities. So those communities could be based on your physical location, the neighborhood, the history of that neighborhood, the traditions. Uh, communities could be based on ethnicity, uh, you know, things, things of that sort. And so when we talk about community, we talk about bringing these various communities together to solve a purpose. And, and obviously our purpose is to uh, educate children and to, to plan their futures. You know, we're in the middle of this virus. What we find is sometimes you don't realize what you have until there's something critical going on. And this is when we really realize in the midst of uh, COVID uh, what community means to us. And what it means is all these different people, whether they're emergency responders, artists, uh, you know, local politicians, uh, neighborhood folks, organizations, downtown Tom's River. That's when you realize what a community you have because they're all stepping up and supporting us and and uh, really helping empower our, our learning process and our students and our families. And I, it's, it's, it's really, it's the fact that we're all discovering, we're not, you know, we, for a long time, we've sort of looked at our differences. You know, we sort of, and, and I think uh, media and, and, and even government is focused on our differences. And what's so interesting about this is it's the great, the great leveler. It is giving us all a sense of commonality. We are realizing, no, we are all human. <laughs> we are all connected. Uh, and uh, and um, you know it, and connected and yet having to be separate. I mean, it's just a really interesting sort of tension that's going on yeah, here. That's a really great point, right? You know, we've never been further apart, and yet we've never been closer together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just that is a fascinating. <laughs> it's a fascinating realization for for, for me. Yes. What makes community important to you, especially at this point in in, in our lives? And I really think that, you know, when we come together, you know, what's so important about it is, you know, we we're strengthening together and we're, we're building this community that's, you know, got a whole new set of features and foundation to it that's based on this common human experience of COVID-19. Yeah. But as we do this, we're really, you know, looking together to try and empower one another and to spark creativity and support those kids who are the neediest and really try and find resources that, you know, in this land of leveling, make it accessible to all and so I, I think that um you know it's even this arts community you know that you're developing through this experience um that engaging the community uh brings us together stronger and um more socially and emotionally connected in a way that we haven't been necessarily before and if you look back at Tom's River and its experience with uh, Hurricane Sandy and the recovery and what's happened since then, um, I think we're starting to see more of that feeling of, okay, you know, we're Jersey strong, we're, we're right, you know, Tom's River strong and we are TR. And I think that that's really kind of interesting and cool um, as an odd side effect to this very tragic but real scenario that's playing out. You know, Tiffany and I have very different backgrounds and different resumes, but I think one of the reasons we almost immediately clicked and became partners in crime for a, a number of different <laughs> initiatives is that we, uh, even though on our resumes you won't see it, we have a definite um, interest in arts. We are, are, a lot of what we do is informed by that kind of artistic sense, and it turns out in a lot of the workshops we do and interaction with teachers and students, that's pretty much inside everybody at some point, whether it was, you know, little cave drawings that we used to do as kids or what we're doodling on the corner of our notes while I'm trying to 
give a presentation. <laughs> people express themselves that way. And so what I'm finding in these times is that community often expresses itself visually just with these captures, whether they're signs that are signs and images that people are draping over their banisters or in their windows or chalk or stuff. They're, they're, yeah, chalk drawings, stuff they're drawing on the, on the driveways. They're, sure. they're amazing. I walk around my neighborhood and I see these chalk drawings that are just kind of messages of hope. Obviously on social media, people just posting pictures. You know, I saw something this morning about a, a kid at a high school who made like 900 masks. And just those images are so inspirational. And yeah. again, as you said before, even though they're these individual efforts, together they build the sense of community. When you just, when you see something in somebody's window, you, you don't have any idea who lives there, but suddenly it binds you to them. It makes this connection, they've communicated with you in a way that if this hadn't happened, we probably never would have spoken. And yeah. if, at least they spoke to me through this. This, uh, this this bed sheet that they put on their uh, in the window. Yeah, right, right, wow. That's, Tiffany, you alluded true. to this, you know, um, the, the idea of, of sort of the, the, the positives coming out of this, as difficult as this situation is, uh, um, there, 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 there is the potential <laughs> to be some really positive things. And, and, and so I'm gonna ask you something that, that you are not planning on, that you weren't planning on, and that is this, what, what do you think potentially, what do you hope are the, 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 the positive things that you're seeing glimmers of um, that you may want to um, expand upon um, or certainly at least realize and acknowledge coming out of this when the vaccine is there and everyone is, you know, congratulating themselves. How, what are the, hopefully the positive aspects that we will gain as we move on from this? I think it's so important that we're starting to really see that everybody has value and is a contributing member of our community. And so whether they're doing it from home or they're doing it out on the front line as a medical worker um, or as a custodian, you know, that everybody is contributing in such an important way. And I, I think that there's a newfound respect for many people um, who weren't necessarily even acknowledged in our everyday lives. Um, yeah. You know, they, they, they say that a crisis brings out the best and the worst of us. We've pretty much only seen the best. And what I see coming out of this is a reflection back and going, look, look at what our teachers did. Look at what our students and our parents did. Look what our community did. Um, we, we, we managed a very stressful time. We managed it not only with grace, but with um, effectiveness, with compassion. And uh, it just shows you what we're capable of, and you don't forget that. You know, you, I, I, you know obviously we're a community that uh, survives uh, Superstorm Sandy, and we're yeah. still in ways recovering from it. And that was a major, has been a major part of the narrative since 2012. This will be a major part of our narrative moving forward. That just that to be able to survive, not only survive, but really just do exceptional work and to show this you know, what we're talking about here, this exceptional community in this time is something we'll keep taking with us. Wonderful, wow, thank you both. This has been an absolute pleasure. Um, I wish you both well. <laughs> thank next, you, you too. I wish you, I wish you health and I wish you, uh, you know, success in, in what you're doing over the next several months. Uh, thank you and, for doing and this. I, I look forward to, to hopefully meeting you in person uh, and, and staring you in the eyes. I mean, that's what <laughs> we're, we're really, really all, all hoping to do at some point in time soon.